would like to bring the January 10th, 2022 regular board meeting of the Whitehall Township Commissioners to order. I'm going to read the HUD statement. Whitehall Township has an obligation to affirmatively further fair housing and to review all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. This includes taking meaningful actions that overcome patterns of segregation and foster inclusive communities free from barriers that restrict access to opportunity based on protected characteristics. The township and its land use decisions does not discriminate against persons based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, disability, or familial status, and reviews all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. Public comments made on the basis of bias and stereotypes concerning people with these protected classes will not be taken into consideration by the township in its deliberations. Okay. Pledge allegiance to the flag, please. And afterwards, we're going to have a moment of silence for our men and women in uniform and our first responders. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Moment of silence, please. Okay. Approval of minutes. A motion to approve the minutes of the regular public meeting, December 13th, 2021. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second I'll it, Warren. Second. Warren. Mr. Ginder, Mr. Warren. Secretary, please pull the board. Uh, we have commissioner comments. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, in the um, section E under other, I made the motion to do an independent audit every year of the treasurer's office. Uh, the comments about from Mr. Gidner are accurate. Um, Mr. Marks, I think you questioned whether the board could even enforce a, an audit of the treasurer at the time for the home rule. And I think uh, the solicitor responded yes. Okay. But, um, also, I think the re the press reported that the motion was tabled, but it was actually voted on in the past seven zero. That's all I have for that one. Thank you. Okay. With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Mr. Ginder, uh, yeah, Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Hi. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Fisher, aye. Commissioner Atia, yes. Commissioner Roman, present. Okay. Uh, President Marks, yes. Okay. Motion passes six eyes, one abstention. Next one, motion to approve the minutes of the following meeting, reorganizational meeting, January 3rd, 2022. Any comments by the board? I have a comment. Um, in the vote for president, there was one abstention um, when, for the nomination of Tom Sloniker for president. He would have been the fourth vote. He abstained. That should be noted in the record. Fair enough. We'll have that noted in the record. Can I have a motion? I'm sorry, Joe, I'll make the motion. That's okay. Can I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Roman, second. With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Excuse me. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Ginder? Commissioner Ginder. Yes. I, it was that an I from Mr. Ginder? Yes, it was. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Atia. Yes. 
Commissioner Sloniker, I and President Marks. Yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, courtesy of the floor, I am going to break <laughs> protocol here. I'd like to read a statement that I wrote, and then I will open the floor to the public. I want to thank the Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Whitehall Township for having the confidence in me to serve as our board president. I will pledge to fulfill the duties of my office to the best of my ability. I also promise to conduct township business in a civil and professional manner. I would also like to inform the citizens and employees of Whitehall Township about a series of events that took place early last week when our incoming treasurer assumed her new office. She immediately called me to inform me that the former treasurer had left the office in disarray. The former treasurer in no way cooperated with a smooth transition. She took away the ability of the incoming treasurer to perform her duties by not providing any information whatsoever. Examples of that were no keys or access for anything. The safe, the office, the outside drop boxes where our citizens pay their taxes and fees due to the building being closed for construction and COVID-19. She also informed her staff who personally told me weeks before her tenure ended that she would make the transition difficult. Whitehall Township is an incorporated business. The collection of revenue is one of our most important functions. It is how we pay our bills and perform services necessary to serve our citizens. The behavior of the outgoing treasurer was unacceptable. Mrs. Corrin, our new treasurer, deserved better, and for that, I personally apologize. With that being said, we are blessed to have a very competent deputy treasurer and an outstanding staff in the treasurer's office. I am confident with their abilities and the incoming treasurer's abilities that all the irregular irregularities that took place in that office will be corrected and moving forward, the office will run in an ethical and professional manner. I want to let the citizens of Whitehall Township know from here on out that the elected officials of Whitehall Township will be held accountable for their actions and behavior, myself included. With that, I'd like to open courtesy of the floor. Melissa. Yes, I have four um, people. The first one is Rob Pilligan. Go ahead, Mr. Pilligian. One second, let me unmute him. Okay. Okay, Rob, you're now unmuted. Thank you, Melissa. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening, President Marks. I'd like to congratulate you, President Marks, and also you, Commissioner Roman, for being uh, elected and reelected, respectively. And also to you, uh, Commissioner Sloniker, for being reelected and being elected to the secretary's position. Uh, President Marks, I listened to your statement, and I'm, it's very concerning, and that's one of my questions this evening. Um, I'd like to know. What's the status of the audit? Uh, Commissioner Warren indicated that it had been voted on and approved at the December meeting, and I do remember that. I'd like to know what, what the status of that audit is. And the reason why I ask this is, given the fact that you said there were irregularities, uh, I, I'm wondering what level of audit do we have? And did anyone take a look to see if anything was shredded? as far as paperwork or records. Mr. Pledge, I'm gonna to defer to Attorney Gross to answer that question. I do know that when the treasurer's tenure is up, there is a reconciliation audit performed. And that audit is currently being ordered to be done. And I was told, and I don't know this for a fact, that potentially it will be performed in April. We are looking for an auditing firm to perform that. but what. Mr. Warren has brought to our attention is he would like an annual audit also performed. So that would be above and beyond of this reorganizational audit or what you know, whatever you want to call this. So I, I'm going to defer to Attorney Gross and see if he can answer the, the questions more clearly. Uh, I really don't have more to add to that. Uh, President Marks, uh, you you repeated what I was aware of, which is that the 
the audit um, that is required by law has been uh, is the, uh, the deputy mayor is underway in, in organizing and having that prepared. Um, I, I, I don't have any information beyond that on, an, on, on another potential audit or on a, on a potential second audit at this point. Uh, per, perhaps Jack Myers does, um, I'm, but I, I don't have anything more. Mr. Myers, would you like to chime in on that at all or? Sure. Um... I've already worked out with RKL, that's the people who do the townships annual financial uh, statements for the township, uh, that they will be doing that. And they inform me that they do this for other places and those are typically done in the months of April and May. So that was their um, suggestion. They would be willing to, and you know, I, I, I have every confidence in them because they're familiar with the township and its makeup that, you know, they'd be able to successfully complete that audit on in the timely fashion that of which they stipulate. All righty, Mr. Pelleggi, in answer to your second question, I was contacted by our incoming treasurer, Mrs. Corrin last Tuesday with concerns <clears throat> about things that may have happened in the office before she took over. Uh, yes, there were shredded documents in that office. There was a garbage bag of shredded documents found. And the shredder, I was told, was almost nearly full. And I was told by our staff when they left on Thursday before the New Year's holiday that the shredded materials and the shredder were empty and actually unplugged when they physically left the office. So that's the best answer I can give you. We have no idea what, what was in that garbage bag or what was in that shredder. Well, thank you, President Marks, and to everybody else who, who uh, responded to my inquiry. Again, I'm appalled at what is happening in this township. Um, I, I don't know what to say. I, I guess my question will be, will the results of the audit be made public? And then a follow-up question to that, and I suspect I already know the answer from the attorney. Um, if it's found that there's been fiscal impropriety, is there legal means to recoup that money? If I could chime in first, and then I'll defer to Mr. Gross again. I also want to report to you that Mrs. Corin called the police department immediately when she made this discovery and immediately contacted myself also. I immediately reached out to Chief Marks and asked to follow up to make sure our police investigated and took this allegation seriously or this investigation seriously. I personally went down there. I witnessed with, with Mr. Roman, our newest commissioner, just so she wanted us to see exactly what was there. Uh, Chief Marks looked into it and I told him or requested of him that if he felt necessary that an outside agency be brought in to look at this, I left it to his discretion and his professionalism to make that call. Uh, he recommended that the office do an internal audit to see if there were any irregularities. And as far as the, the findings, you know, of this shredding, he couldn't make a definitive, you know, conclusion because of the unknown nature of what the shredding is. But like I said, he asked them to perform an internal audit, you know, an inner office audit. And if there was, if they felt that there was anything concerning that they would contact him immediately. Mr. Pelleggi? Commissioner Marks. Yes. You mentioned that the shredder was used prior in the week by staff and it was emptied on Wednesday. Uh, it was emptied when they left for the holiday weekend. So staff does use a, a shredder? Uh, yes, as far as I know, they you do. You know what was emptied in the shredder on Wednesday? What material was in there? That I do not. I'm okay. not privy to that, Mr. Warren. But what right, I assume it, it was the, the, the past week's shreddings. Okay. But like I said, they had indicated to me that they had e even unplugged the shredder, you know, for safety concerns because they were leaving for the weekend, but it was emptied 
and that was found when they came back into the office on Tuesday. I was just making the point that a shredder is used in the office on a regular basis. That's correct. But like I said, they, they had stated that the shredder was empty and that bag of shredded material, and it was a large garbage bag, was not present when they left the office on Thursday. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Yeah, this is Andy Roman. I just want to make a mention as well that shredding was taking place in a room that did not have any cameras. Mr. Pelagian, anything else? No, I'm, I'm absolutely disgusted by this entire situation. So thank you for your time. We'll talk next month. I do, uh, I do want to add something. Um, when I require, requested that an audit be performed every year, um, it was in addition, it wasn't a double audit the same year. It was, I, I felt that our board's work wasn't done until we took some action. We went for months and months and nothing was done. And so I thought it was appropriate if we audit the, the administrative site every year, we should audit the treasurer site every year. Not, it's just uh, every nonprofit goes through an audit of, of, of a sizable nonprofit would go through an audit every year. So why would we not um, audit the receipt accounts? I looked in the home rule charter, the home rule charter in section it's uh, under records and maintenance of audits, check section 1.32. It says the treasurer accounts shall be maintained at the township depository as designated by resolution by the board of commissioners. Those accounts must be audited at the end of each fiscal year or sooner if warranted. So you can interpret that. I interpret that as the charter says an audit shall be performed every year. And we've been doing it every four years for forever. So, Mr. Gr Mr. Gross, if I could, according to first class township code, though, the audit is performed. When the office is reconciled, correct. There is a legal requirement, correct. There's a legal requirement that, that the audit that's going to be performed now be performed every time the, the treasurer changes. Um, I, I. I'm trying to find quickly here the section that um, Mr. Warren was referring to, and I would again probably defer to the deputy mayor here. My general understanding is that that is the audit that is done every year. There, there is an audit done every year, um, and that this is this this audit that's be, going to be done now relates to the audit when the transition when there's a transition from one. Um, uh, one elected official to another. Um, I, I, I also will say that I understood that the motion last month was to do that audit yearly, uh, but I would defer again I, to the deputy mayor as to if there is a, an additional audit that could be done. I, I'm not aware of what that would be. Well, there essentially the, the tax office the treasurer has uh, four distribution accounts, which um, aren't audited because those are under the control of the treasurer. We only audit, our administration only audits the townships accounts that we hold control over. Um, there's a distribution account for real estate, for business privilege, for per capita and for garbage. And those are separate, and those are not um, audited every year by the township. Those are the tax office's accounts. Mr. Gross, I have a question. Does the charter, how, how can I word this? Does the charter up SERP first class township code? The charter, um, so a home rule charter municipality has the right to make certain uh, changes to the form of government that would be different from the first class township code. But to the extent there's a requirement in first class township code that is not addressed in the charter, 
the first class township code likely controls. I, I, I would need to look at the exact section, President Marks, to confirm that. But if, if you can think of it as if there's a requirement in the first class code um, that is uh, that is not covered in the charter, the first class code would generally still control. I, I, I can certainly confirm this if, if you would like, although I, I don't, um, well, why, why don't, if, if I may, if you allow me, I'll look at it further and I'll certainly look at the section that uh, Mr. Warren referred to as well. Is that okay, Mr. Warren? Absolutely. I was just I was just clarifying that I wasn't expecting a double audit be performed this year, but that until some future board decides differently, there should be an annual audit of the treasurer's accounts, disbursement accounts every year. Fair enough. Thanks. President Marks. Yes, Mr. Pledge. If I may ask a question and and this is in direct comment to, to your statement. Um the question is, can the does the treasurer have Individual access to the treasurer's office when the township building's locked. Yes. Yes, my understanding historically has been that the treasurer can go in there after hours and perform any duties necessary that the treasurer feels necessary. And and the comment was made by Commissioner Roman that the shredding was done in a room with no cameras, but I would assume that there are there are cameras that monitor the access to the township building is that correct that's correct so would anyone know who would have been there to do that shredding via the well, my, cameras my understanding was that the former treasurer had allowable access over that time period because her tenure was not up yet now i defer to law enforcement whether or not they looked at video to see who was present in that office during that time period. And they, they've not answered that question then? They haven't answered it to myself, but I'm sure they have that information. I don't know if Chief Marks wants to chime in on this. Uh, we're not we're not gonna discuss any kind of details in, involving the investigation that we've been conducting at this point. I guess I would add that I'm a little disappointed that some of the facts that are coming out, I'm learning for at this meeting while somebody that's not a board of commissioners knows. Um, the, there was an email, I don't know what, where this room was, what it was, but I will say this, an email was sent when they transitioned to the new building about camera systems not being completely operational or installed in certain areas and they were being the work was being prioritized and equipment was on order or something like that. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of speculation of what room it was, you know, was it lavatory? Some, did somebody go in the lavatory or do it? Or was it in a room where it's scheduled to have cameras? It's just, it wasn't installed as part of the building project. So, I mean, you can make innuendos here, but I think we should get the facts straight before we start making allegations. Because there's, where, what the what the people need to know occurred in the first two weeks of the investigations of the treasurer's office, and that's not being discussed. Any other comments on this subject? Uh, this is Commissioner Fisher. Quick question, and this might be towards Chief Marks. Do we have an approximate timeline or an idea of when we might be able to get more information? No, I can't provide any at this point. Okay. No, because I mean, I, I do need to agree with, um, I need to agree with uh, both sides here. I think we kind of need like the facts established. And I think we have to get a little bit more information about exactly what happened where, and um, then we can go from there. So we'll just see what comes out. Any more comments on this subject? Uh, Melissa? Yes. Can you put our next attendee on, please? Yes, the next attendee will be Ken Snyder. Mr. Snyder, you have the floor. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Uh, as you know, you all know me one way, shape, or form. It's been a long time since I've been at a meeting. Uh, I have some general house questions, or I guess you'd call it that at this point. 
Can you guys see me at this point? I cannot, Mr. Schneider. Okay, that's fine. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. When does the Board of Commissioner expect to have their meetings opened and in person versus this method? Well, that's a discussion I believe we that is necessary and that we have to have in the immediate future. Unfortunately, due to construction and COVID, a combination of both, but primarily construction, the public safety building is up and running and 90% of the administrative building is up and running. Unfortunately, the last room that was addressed was our public meeting room. So at this point, we don't have the ability to hold public meetings in that public meeting room. The constructions we're told should wrap up in the month of February, March at the latest. There's some supply chain issues from my understanding. We're hoping for the best. I feel it's necessary. I understand Omicron is, is surging as we speak, but I feel as soon as we can possibly get back to public meetings, I feel it's necessary to engage and engage with the public. I also feel strongly, and this is an administrative function and an administrative you know, decision that now that the building is 90% finished, we have a large open room where our public can engage with the necessary offices that they need to conduct business with. And I think if masks are required in that public space and social distancing requirements also, I, I understand there, the one problem is that the windows that were installed in the treasurer's office, in the recreation office, and in our zoning and code office are inadequate to perform the services necessary. They're bulletproof, but they don't have cutouts. So what they are is sliding windows and they physically have to slide the window open with no ability to secure the office at the same time. My understanding is the construction manager, the architects are aware of this and they're looking at other avenues to where they can make those windows safer and more functional. And it, it'll kill two birds with one stone. What it will do is it'll enable us to perform secure business at those windows, and it'll also protect our staff from potential harm from the virus. Uh, Jack, can you chime in on this? Jack Myers? Well, I, 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 I'm unaware of what, uh, other than some of the problems with, um, the way that the windows move of of doing anything where you would be cutting into an existing window, you know, to make things so. But you know, that's right now. You, as you correctly stated, that's with uh, you know, with the contractor and with our construction manager. Um, we were we we are just waiting um, until we have everything in order in the records with the police department since they just started just moved recently um we anticipated by the end of january that you know we would be opening up in february and that's still our goal as it, it pertains to the public meeting room um the contractor and our our construction manager are looking forward to turning that part of the building over to the township. The problem with that though is, is that all of the audio visual gadgetry and, and uh, IT will not be in when that is turned over because all of those things are problems with supply chain and and acquiring the, the equipment to do this. So we would be able to hold, say, uh, our workshop meetings or any unrecorded meetings, but um, everything else is probably we're looking to April till we get all of the technology for the uh, contra contractor to come in and install. So those are the two situations as, as I see them right now. All right, thank you, Jack. Appreciate sure. it. Sure. 
Uh, Mr. Schneider, I hope that addressed some of your concerns. It does to some point. Um, I get to other municipalities and I understand that everybody's trying to figure out how to slide things through windows, under windows, don't work, open doors and all the other good stuff. But the reality of it is that the municipal building should be open sooner than later. And I understand your supply chain arrangement, but I would think that we could be sitting here and if you tell me that you don't have the availability of glass and I'm sitting here in June, that you're still not gonna open. I, I grant February and all the other good stuff, but this this township has to figure a way to get open so people can come in and talk to you. That's number one. And I accept your terms, but I would not wanna be sitting here in April and finding out we're in the same boat as we are then recognizing that supply chain can do that to you, but you need to figure out an alternative system going forward. That's number one. Number two, you, you say that we don't have the availability for in-person meetings because of the um, what's going on in uh, the meeting room. And I understand that also, but we also have a public meeting at the school, at the school district that's available to us. We have a board of directors over there for school meetings available to us. It's not as though we don't have places to go to have a public meeting. And if you tell me that it's gonna be resolved during the month of February, so be it. But if it's not if it's not resolved by the month of February, then you need to figure out where you can get people in to talk to you. And I'm not attending the meeting in a long time, but just to listen to what's going on um, in, the, in, the, in the beginning section tells me that you need to have an open meeting sooner than later so people can come in because not everybody has the availability to do what we're doing tonight. So I would ask that the board that if you're not going to be open by the end of February, that you come up with an alternative plan by March to be someplace because the supply chain has the only thing it has right now is no guarantees. And that's what's going on and everybody has to understand that, but you also have to make an adjustment. So I would strongly recommend that uh, you look into that issue. Another issue, uh, I have your agenda that came out in the winter newsletter. Are your workshops done in the same manner as we're doing these here tonight? Yes, they are, Mr. Schneider. Okay, so their availability to check in and do that. Um, and the last question I have in the um, in the uh, mayor's message, winter of 2022, he did an article specifically about the R2 zone, which is the hospital. Um, the valley is growing at a very fast pace, and for those of you who I've talked to individually in the past umpteen years. I'm concerned that Whitehall is basically sliding back with certain things as compared to the Valley. Um, our revenue comes from a lot of places. One of them is heavy retail and you got your housing and your employers. There is no new construction projects going on in Whitehall Township. There's no new construction available for other people to consider moving into our township. And when I look at the parcels that are available, whether they're up, up in Egypt, for this particular parcel, the growth pattern will come to an end and really what will happen is Whitehall will become an older community when we have the availability to um, expand our residential base. And in his article, he said that the commissioners are in the process of reviewing, and I may have this mixed up, current plans and making a decision as to whether we're gonna collect from 120 new homes or become a non-taxable arrangement with the hospital. Could you explain to me exactly where we're at in that process? Well, I was confused a little by that also, Mr. Schneider. I'm going to defer to the mayor and maybe he can explain himself better. He was the author of that. Uh, my belief, and Mr. Myers looked into this, is that it's many more homes, but I'll defer to the mayor on that question. The, the numbers you're talking about, um, 120 homes, um, I'm not, where do you get that from Ken? Uh, it says there is no question development will provide needed medical facilities in support of our residents. The board will have to make a hard deci a decision. We'll have to have a hard decision to make. Do we give up land for about 120 homes at some point down the road? Or do we support the E of L proposal, which is to remove much of the land from the real estate taxation? Okay. Um, one that was done uh, that was uh, three months ago um, that I penned that 
At that point, we were looking at somewhere around 40 acres uh, of land. Um, and at this point, it has now, uh, it's now looking like 77 uh, acres that they're looking for this overlay. So um, I was trying to, uh, back then, <clears throat> give my best understanding of what the trade-off was between the medical and the residential locations over there, Ken. So the, the in the article, um, and I don't want this to sound like I'm grueling, but it's going to, it says the plan currently provides. So I'm assuming they've made either a sketch plan or something. So what part of the process are they actually in? They've, they've uh, gone through a number of iterations uh, going back for, I don't know, 10 years or more, but recently they've, um, they have, uh, requested some information, which has resulted in them making decisions, uh, about what they hope to see. Uh, at this point, there's no, uh, indication uh, that it's going to be or not going to be going to the commissioners uh, for for action. Um, they'll be at the uh, legal and legislative meeting next week. Uh, and if you want to sit in on that, you may. You can ask the questions directly of the people who are going to be uh, giving some information to us. And the board is, is uh, I'm sure, going to be uh, dealing with that. Um, so I they're guess looking, they're looking at uh, a number of different things. I think they're they're coming close to a decision on what they want to see. They've put something in front of us, but as uh, as is stated, uh, uh, or maybe not in what I wrote, uh, this property once it does get, if it does get uh, the authorization for the overlay, um, could wind up in producing anything uh, right. from this point on, because there's no development plan in front of us for review at this point. So I understand you do, th you do a, uh, if I can remember how I did this, you do a sketch plan and you do a preliminary plan. Once you follow your preliminary plan, you're on record and you protect the zoning and the site like that. Have they filed a preliminary plan? Uh, not to my knowledge, and I don't think uh, that'll be coming out in the very near future. Okay. Um, so I don't know exactly Ken. So then the way they're approaching this is they're going to your um, legislative committee and proposing to have some type of zoning changed to the current zoning to allow an overlay of some sort. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So my next question to the commissioners would be that when you do an overlay, you can do an overlay that ends up being 100% commercial, 100% whatever, but you also could do an overlay that would at least give, I'm gonna pick numbers here, 60% residential and 40% office. Is that correct, Mike? Um, say that again, Ken. In other words, when you do an overlay, you're basically saying that I'm controlling the zoning of what I would like to be in that overlay zone. So they could come to you and say, I would like to overlay this, that I do medical, hospital, et cetera, or the commissioners based on your arrangements in here could say, no, we don't want to lose all the tax revenue. We would like to see a blend between residential and, okay, uh, medical as an example. So I guess what I'm saying is, is it the goal of the commissioners to stop residential development in our township? Or what is what, what's the what's the plan here? Because this is a major decision, as you stated. Let me respond first by saying, this pertains basically to half of the land, uh, okay. the overlay. Okay, so at that point, um, at, you would say sixty forty. Um, if you were talking about the entire parcel, uh, it's coming out to about fifty percent. Of, of the land, okay. um, they have uh, they have suggested and has uh, have have provided that uh, going to the LNL Legal and Legislative Board, 
uh, was the most effective way to get adequate information from dir directly from the board. Um, when, when I said what I said before, um, it was ev ev even a, a, a different circumstance. They're, they have, regardless of where we are, a very hard decision to make because uh, the Lehigh Valley Health Network wants to put primarily, if not exclusively, uh, medical facilities in there. Um, that, that could potentially change, uh, could still be medical, but potentially taxable. Um, so that, that's a, a major uh, portion of their position on this, that they want to see medical facilities there that would uh, leave us with about uh, another 70 acres of potential residential development in the in the western portion of that, um, it, it's still fluid in my mind. Um, but the question as to do we want to provide additional medical options within Whitehall Township that would be much more accessible to our residents, or do we want to maintain where we were? Uh, before when it was all residential, or are we looking for a mix of that? And I don't think, and Joe is the one who can answer this, um, you know, where is the board going with this? I think, uh, you know, they're still looking for information. And Joe, you, you may have better uh, words than me about your position at this point. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Schneider, if I could recommend, uh, I actually just gave the chairmanship of LNL up to Mr. Ginder, but I will defer to Mr. Ginder. Uh, we have an LNL meeting coming up this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. You can get on the same way you got onto this meeting tonight. And if I could recommend you participate in that meeting, it'll sort of give you an outlay of where LNL currently is with Lehigh Valley. And maybe you could get more explanations out of that meeting than this meeting, because there may, or may be representatives of Lehigh Valley on the meeting with Chairman Ginder, and maybe they could give you more information, you know, pertaining to what they're proposing. So, so if I may say, uh, this is Commissioner Fish. Excuse me, this is Commissioner Fisher, and um, Attorney uh, Attorney Gross might be able to comment on this better. At this upcoming L and L meeting, it's still kind of a fact finding mission, primarily for the commissioners. Um, public comment on this um, issue may be limited at the moment. This is going to be a longer process. Um, we're still asking a lot of preliminary questions, but there will be plenty of time as this process goes on to get everyone's questions answered. Is that correct, uh, Attorney Gross? Uh Yes, that's correct. Wednesday's L and L meeting, Lehigh Valley, uh, to to President Marx's comment, uh, rep representatives of Lehigh Valley will be there to share a their most recent proposed uh, ordinance. It is still in the preliminary discussion phase. It has not had a first reading to the board, um, and. Uh, I, as I understand it, uh, the L and L committee expects to look at and ask questions about uh, about that updated version uh, version of the ordinance. Certainly, there would have to be um, at least two, and maybe more, opportunities for public comment um, at at board meetings before before a vote before there could be a hearing and a vote on on uh, on the ordinance. So that's uh, that's sometime in the future. If so, the board and if the board decides to move forward. So to make it clear, you all know that I'm a builder developer. My developing days are retired. I have no intentions of buying or purchasing or developing this parcel, but I am looking to get involved in different things in the township. And um, while you say that this does not move swiftly, if an organization pre prepares their own ordinance and gives it to you to review, in most cases, that ordinance is to their favor, and that's where it's done. And if we sit here by, by just say everything goes right, 
you go to the meeting, the commissioners love it at this, they bring it to the township during the month of February, discuss it, puts it on for its first reading in March, it's taken care of, and in April, it's approved. It can happen that fast. On the same token, it can also take years for it to happen, depending on the amount of input. And as I was reading the uh, message from the mayor and the plan and everything else, I got the impression that this was a further, a lot further than what was discussed. And I understand that, but I would like to poll the board at this particular point and ask them, are they in favor of residential or are they not in favor of residential? Well, this is, this is president Marks, Mr. Schneider. I, I think it's pre too premature at this time. I mean, I just base it on common sense. I, I have to see the whole thing before I can even start to render a judgment. We are too early in their proposal to even give you an inkling on where I stand because I, I mean, to make things perfectly clear, they, they made a couple presentations to us, but there are a lot of things to be considered before I could even start to start to make a decision on this, you know. I, I, I understand what you're saying and it, it's really not, it's really not to this project as a whole. Our township does have parcels that can be developed both in Egypt and other locations. Mm -hmm. And the question in the past has always been, we don't want to see any more residential development within our township. And I think it's time that we go back and revisit those statements. So I don't care if it's the hospital or not. I'm trying to get a feel for the board. Are they looking to let us grow in some of these areas? There's a parcel up in Egypt that can be developed. There's one on the right hand side that can be developed. And I'm trying to find out exactly where the board's going with some of the things. Because to be honest with you, it's sitting on this nice meeting. There's a lot of things that have happened in our township in the last 12 months that really puts a big black eye in our township. I'm not a happy camper. I'm yeah. not a happy camper. And I think that, you know, when you sit down and the questions are coming here, what's your five year plan? What's your comprehensive plan look like now? There's new people on the board. These are valid questions. Our mall is in the Whitehall Mall is vacant. Nothing that I can hear from anybody what's happening on that. Uh, these are the kinds of things that I think you should be addressing and working your way through the process. What happened in the treasurer's office and stuff like that, that's a separate issue. But at this particular point, let me tell you, drive around between Leon County and Northampton County and look at some of the retail that's being built. And I guarantee you, not everybody's driving to the Whitehall and the Lehigh Valley Mall like they used to. Maybe the sales are there, but the Hamilton crossings and some other things are doing very, very well. And I think if we sit back and don't address this issue, and Mr. Marks, you and I have had this conversation before, okay? And I firmly believe that these are the things that our commissioner should be looking at up front. Where are we going to be in five years if we sit back and don't look at what assets we have in our township and try to make them pro, I don't know, pro, pro development or pro anything to make tax revenue come in? That's all I'm saying. I'll now probably be back in another meeting and ask you guys, what are we doing to look at the growth of Lenar Township? Does anybody have any answers on that that's sent on the board in the last two, three years? What are you doing? Joe, can I respond briefly to, sure. to Ken? Mm -hmm. um, there, in, in terms of residential development, uh, there's a, another phase of Taylor Villas that's ongoing. Um, uh, Eagle View, uh, up in Cementon uh, is on the books. Uh, Haven Ridge is uh, completing their build out uh, with uh, a number of additional uh, houses, um, condominiums. Um, I have been contacted by people who, who do want to develop land that's up in Egypt and I have uh, consulted with them. It's a very preliminary process. This is going on all over the township. Uh, yes, we, we aren't as big as the rest of the uh, surrounding communities that are not boroughs, uh, the, the uh, North Whitehalls and South Whitehalls and, and the rest of what exists in the, in the Western part of the county. But we, when you said we got a black eye over the last year, I'd be curious as to what you meant about that, Ken. Michael, 
Don't make me get into that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to. But I'd be glad to talk with you about it. I understand. Okay. I, this is a positive from my side of the table. I prefer to keep it on that on that level. I'm not upset with anybody. I'm just telling you that I would like to see us focus on this type of thing. You're going to be discussing whatever happened in that treasurer's office and everything else. Get back to what's good for the people. You spent $7.9 million on a project for the municipal building. It looks fantastic. I talked to you separately, Mike. Not one dollar was spent or discussed about a recreation center. There was nothing in that project for the people in our community to use. Our current recreation uh, things that we're working on at this particular point, there's not enough kids to fill the baseball fields and the football fields. Do we have land that the township owns that can be better turned into tax revenue instead of us just cutting grass? These are the kinds of things I would like to see our commissioners and the mayor talk about in a positive manner. That's all I'm saying. Ken, I, I, I'd be happy to, to review that with you um, at any time you'd like. Um, and uh, maybe we can sit down in the near future and, and talk a bit. Um, but I think we're uh, pushing I'm good. up on. Uh, I would uh, add one thing. Yeah, I would add one thing that I don't want to live in a town. We can't grow ourselves out of out of a situation. If you look what happened in other municipalities that don't have planned growth. Yeah, house is going up, warehouse is going up. Yeah, the, the revenue is great when it first comes in, but then in 10, 15 years times, you, now you have to maintain those roads. The developers are long gone. Nobody has told me yet what it costs to pay, may, pave a half mile of road and do the storm inlets. And that's something that we have to consider. If we come out and tell the tell a neighborhood in Fullerton or a neighborhood in Egypt that, oh, your park now is going to become a, a land development, that's a, something to consider. I don't think people want that either. So um people are trying people are passing open space referendums recreation referendums uh how do you think i feel as a commissioner when i had to take my family outside the township to do gym practice and bring money when we don't have the facilities within the township so um, we are doing a recreation review and that's something a rec center you know what are we going to add another fifteen thousand people and not grow recreation that's something, I mean, there's a lot of good questions here. And I would go on, I would add to Mr. Snyder's comment. Uh, MacArthur Road is our main street. We have to maintain a certain level of prominence for our main street. And when that real estate transfer tax revenue comes in, it goes right into the general fund and it pays other bills. And I can't tell you when the last time we bought banners, when we put Christmas, new Christmas decorations. Um, you know, we have to stay one, hep, one step ahead of the Joneses and make our main street invitable. And that means keeping it clean, whether it's a state road or it's a township road. Uh, nothing burns me more than to see debris or last year's, last winter's sediment on MacArthur Road. I don't care if it's a state road or a township road, it needs to be clean and somebody's gotta do it. So I'm sorry, to, I'll get off my soapbox. No, my purpose of tonight's uh, open discussion was just to bring these points up and throughout the year, I probably will revisit you to see what progress you were making or if you're even considering the plans. I don't expect everybody to agree with me one way or the other, but the future of Whitehall Township, I do think is very important. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. We can agree on that, Ken. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Okay, Melissa, do we have anyone else? I saw you sent a message that Mrs. Gober wanted to speak. Yeah, the mayor had asked um, me to add her onto the list for her to receive the floor. So I have um, next I have Phil Armstrong, then Paul Geisinger, then Mick D, and then Colleen Gover. Okay, uh, Mr. Armstrong, our Lehigh County Executive, welcome. Okay, okay, hey, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you, Mr. Armstrong. All right. All yeah. right. Well, first of all, congratulations to the new commissioners and to the new officers. Uh, I look forward to the next four years of working with you. This is uh, my annual visit to all of the municipalities in Lehigh County. And I always like to start at my home base. But uh, if Mr. Snyder wants some good news, I have some great news of some cooperation of things that we've been doing with uh, Allentown, Whitehall, public and private uh, investment and 
I'm sure Mayor Harrickle has already talked about the grant we got to extend, extend the rails to trail up through from Allentown up into Whitehall and build a road. Now that is something that uh, I know a number of us cooperating at Whitehall, Allentown, myself, the local uh, state reps, the Pennsylvania State Senator, the United States Senate. We've, uh, Mike and I have walked the river with Senator Casey. We have done everything. And when that was announced, it is going to just be a, a fabulous addition to Lehigh County, but to open up the riverfront for recreation and to, to allow people now to, to, to be able to ride a bicycle 83 miles from up in the, the coal regions down to Philadelphia. This was in the three and a half mile section that wasn't there. So I, I never gave up on it. I, I know I was a pain in a lot of people's backsides in Washington, D.C. and some of these organizations I belong to. But I think it, the outcome really shows the residents that government can work together, they can get things accomplished, and just give it a couple of years. This is going to be, and I, I can't wait to ride my bike. I know I, I saw Deputy uh, Mayor Myers walking the trail uh, last week, but I'm sure we can get maybe a bike ride going on this new trail together. Also, some other great news, you know, with this new infrastructure bill, I know Whitehall, as a former resident who lived below Route 22 and rode his bike over the Fifth Street Bridge, we're so happy that in this infrastructure bill, we are getting a commitment that that Fifth Street Bridge is going to go back again. And I think that's been a, a very important question a lot of people have been asking. So it's there. Now it's just a matter of, you know, when we can get it going. but. We never gave up on it and uh, we've been working very hard. And uh, I know okay, Commissioner Warren has done a number of applications for a lot of grants for Whitehall. And uh, he's been on our back about that too, to make sure we keep that in a, on our front front burner and we have. So I think we're, we're, we're doing well working together. And I, I'm, I'm really proud of the relationship that especially Whitehall has uh, with Lehigh County. And uh, our newest commissioner now is from Whitehall. And we have another commissioner who is from Whitehall and moved to Emmaus. But uh, so we, it's nice that uh, we have people thinking of the Northern tiers, but we also you know, consider the Southern part too and everything we have to do there. But be proud of that, that rails to trail thing going up. It's going to also be a road where emergency equipment will be able to get up and down from Allentown up to Whitehall. So there's going to be a lot of good things, but I don't really come to talk. I come to, if you have any questions, you want to know about what's going on in the county, or I'm here, uh, I'm available. And uh, right now, if you have any questions to me, please ask. Mr. Armstrong, this is Commissioner Warren. Yes, uh, I asked you, I think, last time you came um, the status you know, our, our emergency services radios uh, are currently analog and they're approaching end of life. I know Absolutely. the county has look, been looking at converting to digital radios over the years. We've been trying to set money aside slowly to convert our radios from analog to digital. And our first inkling was to do a dual conversion where the radios that we buy are a little more costly. And their dual frequency, but how far out is the county's conversion to digital? And is there going to be efforts to help municipalities who are going to have to now buy new radios to keep the cost down with some economy scales purchases? Great, great question, Commissioner Warren. Uh, actually, had a meeting on that very topic today. Uh, Delaware County, for example, has done that, and it cost them about fifty million dollars. What you're looking at is land acquisition for towers. Uh, it's more than just buying radios. We're looking at in Lehigh County, 
with the radios, the towers, the land acquisition, and everything that goes with it, 24 or 25 million. So we're at that process right now, assessing where, what we need to do, uh, you know, will we be able to pull the, the tab and pay for that? Absolutely not. Uh, can we get some help from the state? We're hoping to. Uh, will the municipalities uh, being having to pay something? Yes, we're looking at uh, the rough price for the radios are about $1,000 each. So, you know, you're looking at every car that you have in your police force, uh, that would be a $1,000 expense. And, and that's what we're looking at right now. But right now we're in the stage of assessing exactly how we're going to go about doing this. It is something that has to be done, okay? And we're working toward it. But it's not something that next week we're going to announce that everybody has to have a new $1,000 radio to be part of the system. But, but you're absolutely correct. And we are working on it. And uh, a five year again, plan or 10 year plan, would you say? Uh, we're trying to do it in a five year plan, right? Okay, yeah, I just I, hate I to see trying. The circle. Okay, yeah, thousand yeah. dollars seems like a better price than what we're currently paying for radios, but right, right. Well, that's we're kind of looking at somehow getting a group rate and uh, then dividing, dividing the cost up into the municipalities for the radios, so. Again, I okay, think it you. will be best if we do it regionally. Good question, though. Thank you. Is there anyone else for Mr. Armstrong? Uh, Mr. Armstrong, this is uh, Commissioner Fisher. Yes. Uh, quick question. So, probably about a year ago, we had Lanta come in front of us to talk about a, a possible express uh, bus route that was supposed to act similar to light rail that could get people between Northampton and Lehigh County much faster than the regular Lanta systems. Now, I had some concerns and reservations at the time about some of the technical feasibilities of it, and we kind of haven't heard anything since then, but I was wondering if you could comment on that or if you know anything else about Lanta's plans. Well, in this I regard. know they're still working with the Lehigh Valley Transportation Commission on developing those. You know, people have been talking about introducing light rail uh, before we can do that, we would like to, to look at the Lanta system and see if we can upgrade it. Right now, you know, from Allentown up to, to Whitehall is the number one route in Lanta. More people use that, get up to Walmart, uh, to the malls and back and forth. So it would be a great express right from there. But they're looking for where they could have stations where they could express and then another bus do a local thing. And uh, it's in the process. Not okay. done yet though, Mr. Fisher. Okay, yeah. So I'm, can, I, can I make note of something, Phil? Would you mind if I jumped in here? Sure. Um, Lanta is looking at two, um, two higher speed, uh, not higher speed, but two more direct routes. And Whitehall is in the middle of both of them. Right. So um, they they are working around 22 and 145, and that's going to be helpful to us. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I'm curious, and I'd definitely like to be kept in the loop. I think it would be really interesting. I was just I know these roads. I drive these roads, and some of the ways they were describing mm -hmm. about how the buses would work with the the light timing. I just I wasn't 100 percent sure how it would work. So I mean, if we can get more technical details and we can learn more about it, I'd be very interested. Because uh, I really want to see it. I really, if it can be done, I really want to see it. I'll get it for you. Okay. And then the last, the absolute last thing I have is just, um, I just want to thank you and everything you and the mayor have done for uh, the rail trail system. I'm a very heavy rail trail user. So, I mean, I would love, and it, it, it kind of pains me that, you know, that whole route between Bristol, uh, Pennsylvania, and then up near Mountaintop, that, you know, we're the biggest gap. So, as soon as that gap is closed, in the rail trail, that would be great. And if you guys are out riding it and you want to be in the inaugural thing, invite me along. I would, I would love to go along. I would, I really want to see this trail completed. So thank you. And, and you know what, Mr. Fisher, uh, you're absolutely correct. That gap has caused, you know, I've met with the Pennsylvania Department of People in the Interior 
and the recreation department in the state. And there are a number of people who inquire about that. And then when they find out about the gap, they decide, well, maybe they'll go somewhere else rather than, than that. So I think it is going to increase tourism too. And it's going to be an economic boom for us to get this done. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to its completion. I can't wait. I want to get the hot dog. Maybe Mr. Mr. Slonaker could get his hot dog machine out and he can have a concession stand down there. Uh, you know, <laughs> I haven't uh, made fun of him in a long time. So it's time I did nice. that. <laughs> awesome. Don't worry, so, Phil. So I've made okay. fun of you whether you've been there or not. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> so that's all I have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Okay. Anybody else, Mr. Marks? How about you? Nothing. Uh, nothing at this point, Executive. But thank you so much for coming on, and thank you. You know, we're honored to have you, and thanks for everything that you're doing. Congratulations on your successes. Thank you. Well, I'm here when I when you need me. You know where I am. We know where uh, you are. You, you always okay. have to come home to Whitehall. So, <laughs> yes, I do. I have one item for the executive. Uh oh. Yeah. The executive Armstrong, I would just like for you to bear in mind if the county is interested in acquiring acquiring a wall, uh, we we do have a wall for sale. <laughs> uh, just, just keep that in mind and don't look elsewhere for one. I, if 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 we want to buy a wall, you will be the first wall that that we look into. You know, I think of you guys every day with my candy dish that you gave me as a going away gift. It's still on my desk. So just remember, we have a wall that we we, we would sell. So and okay, <laughs> thank you for a good job done as executive for the county. So we couldn't thank ask you. more. Thank you, Phil. Is that it for the executive? Going once, going twice. Okay, Mr. Armstrong, if you have nothing else, we're going to move on with our agenda. Thank you so much for participating. Melissa, are you there? Yes. And we have the next attendee, please. Next person is Paul Geisinger. Yes, good evening, gentlemen, and congratulations to the uh, commissioners that were elected and reelected, and congratulations to the new uh, officers of the board. But anyway, my first uh, question. Mr. Geisinger, you're 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 a little difficult to hear. Could you please speak up? Okay, can you hear me better? Yeah, it's a little better. Uh, man, I mean, I had the microphone too far away from me. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's okay. Uh, my my first interest is, and I I can't speak because I don't have anything in, written in front of me, and I didn't want to go through the expense of doing an RTK. Uh, but I, I have the understanding that somewhere along the way, within the last couple of months, that a memo may have come out of recreation uh, from the recreation commission stating that uh, for any future development or anything where any recreation impact fees are involved that they won't review them and they just wanted the money. If, if this is factual, I believe this is a little short sighted. Anytime you review uh, any kind of development, it should be very delivered. In, in, in considering uh, what's going to happen and how it's going to affect the future of the township. So to take a, a blanket. Uh, or to make a blanket statement of such that just hand us the money for recreation, I think is very short sighted. Mr. Geisinger, I don't know if that came from the Recreation Commission. Um, since I've been on the board, I think the last opportunity where we had a chance to consider land in lieu of rec fees might have been Haven Ridge, and that thing is nearly fully blown out. Um, the um, wrist, the, 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 the estates there in north um, north part of the Whitehall in Egypt, there wasn't any land offered in the NAT. Um, we've been dealing with it. You've been you're on the you're on the commission there, so you know that there hasn't been any big properties that came come in front of us where we're given an option between between um, rec fees versus land. Um, well, it's not whether or not uh, 
Commissioner Warren, it's not whether or not you're given the option. In some instances, as a, a Mr. Geisinger, you're very difficult to hear. If you can, as far as the Recreation Commission is concerned, they have to make a determination, and each development should be done on its own merit. To have a blanket statement saying uh, we're just going to take the money, I think is kind of short-sighted. Let's, let's I think it. there was more to that statement there, meaning we're not taking floodplains in lieu of recreation fee. Um, so you know what it said. I'm, you know, I, it's, it's gotta be high value and I'm, I'm supportive of the right land and the right location. Um, but I don't, I don't think that came from the recreation commission. There's no, there was no memo. Um, there was a question of why we never hear back from the recreation commission and everything that's been pre presented to us in the last 2 years, 3 years. Has have been lots that were just subdivided into smaller lots. It wasn't... Yeah, I understand. I understand that. Yeah. But okay, so what you're saying is there never was a memo or anything presented to anyone in the township or or penned by anybody in the township that said we're not the rec commission is not going to function to do their job. We just want the money. Not that I'm aware, of. not from the rec commission. I can tell you though, the discussion was uh, the township waiving the rec fees on open land that was contrary to the 2005 ordinance. The 2005 ordinance clearly stated that open land divided into one more lots isn't free of paying the rec fee. And I oh, think, for, but in the past it's been waived. One lot has been waived for every, if you take one lot, divide it into two, they only, in the past, they were only assessing one rec fee for that lot. Well, that's that because the one lot's already paid the fee, but that's an, that's understandable. Well, the, the, the 2005 ordinance doesn't, doesn't allow that. So my question was to clarify it. I think if you're bringing a new resident into the township, building a new residential facility, it should pay a rec fee. Um, you know, um, unless we pass like a homestead exemption where somebody's building on a family lot. But oftentimes somebody buys a piece of land, subdivides it, sells it to other people, and then they're gone. So um, we're, we're struggling to pay for recreation. And I think a blanket statement saying, well, the one lot on a, you know, if we take one lot, divide it into two, we only charge one rec fee. I think if it's two new families coming in, two new residents, we should be charging two fees as the ordinance states, so, unless we change it otherwise. So, but yeah, I think, uh, I value your comment there because I think we should be looking at everything. Um, and okay, so then I'm, I then I'm mistaken. I'm mistaken, Mr. Warren. Then that no, I, I would hope it's clear. I mean, two, we're 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 the rec commission is dealing with information that they're they're provided. Um, normally, it's like I can tell you on that board. Um, some of the meetings are well, we have two new lots developed, and this much money went into X Y Z account. Um, it it. It's not even, you know, you know what what plans have come in front of us, and um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Taylor Villas is the, probably the last one, the last big lot. Um, Eagle exactly. View at that's, States, but that's not my question, Mr. Warren. My 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 understanding, and then what you're saying is my understanding is wrong. There was never any information presented that a blanket decision to take the money instead of reviewing. The plans is that not that I, not that I'm, I'm aware saying, of, but I I know the statement was made that we're not going to take um, land in the floodplain in lieu of recreation fees. Oh, of course not. <laughs> I I that I that I totally agree with. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I'm just making it clear that if that if such an, a memo or any such thing exists, I I I really object to it because, like I said, uh, planning for for any purpose in this township, whether it be recreation or not, needs to be it's all worked on its own merits and, and on each individual process. I agree 100% with you there. Okay. My second thing is, and this is again, this is just by hearsay, and this is from what I understand, that somewhere along the line, there was a discussion last month about reopening and looking at the park open space and recreation plan. And there was a comment made by some individual um, I don't know who exactly it was, but that we should maybe give this over to the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission. Well, I object to that entirely. Uh, I've been on the last two open space, park open space and recreation ad hoc committees, got this started, got the Recreation Commission started, what, 25, 30 years ago. Uh, please 
do not, do not in any way, shape, or form take such a responsibility for planning and development of our recreation to the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission. We have enough people in Whitehall Township that have the time that can put the effort into this. So please, Mr. Harrigal, if, if this ever becomes to fruition, please appoint an ad hoc committee. Mayor, would you Sorry, like I was I was muted. Um, we're we're uh, coming forward with uh, a uh, ad hoc committee for the uh, Mickley Pride and Farm. Um, we we did them in other times in other locations. I don't think I, I I've no doubt, Paul, that somebody at some point said enough of this. We want the money because. What we had been getting at some time in the past, and this is quite some time ago, uh, we were getting bad land. And uh, so, you know, we know that it's uh, more appropriate to have a choice than to just say money, money, money. So we have to make the right decision. Well, I agree. I, I was actually on the planning commission when some of the uh, post gimmies of land who you know the fees was slope the land that was totally worthless and there's other areas where may have been crossing pipelines or something of that nature uh and i understand that that was then we already said hey we, we don't want this but uh, maybe i'm totally misunderstood exactly what was said then as i said it was i thought it was a blanket thing that says uh we're going to take money instead of you know reviewing the process but if that's not uh, factual, then I will step aside. On my second thought, though, uh, can you answer to that as to can we get an ad hoc committee together to look at the park open space and recreation plan? Please don't give it to the Leah Valley Planning Commission. But they, they don't have any interest in our, our recreation. We have to have our own interest. Um, Paul, we've reached out to the Lehigh Valley Planning Commission for assistance in helping us put together a uh, recreation comprehensive plan. Uh, the last one was a while ago. Uh, so we're getting started on that. Um, hopefully we're going to be getting some, uh, some grant money in order to pay folks to help us with that. But we, that's going to fall primarily uh, through through those uh, people who can advise us uh, to, uh, I don't know, seven or nine people that will be on that uh, committee and trying to figure out where we do go with the uh, needs in the township. Um, there was uh, a note that we should be doing a, uh, um, a community building. Um, you know, we will take that into consideration. And at this point, we still have the opportunity with the land that we do have uh, to put some really nice things on it. So we're, we're moving forward. Okay, thank you. If I could add to, um, there was a parcel of land that the township owned the corner of Columbia and MacArthur Road that was once designated an open space and with all the development around it, I think the board chose to rezone that land as a possible avenue to sell off and um, because we no longer felt that it was high value land for open space in that particular right there off the highway. So um, these questions don't go un un unasked on how we best serve our people. But don't we still have the... Uh... In the recreation, the existing recreation plan, a room where I believe the uh, towers are on the South Church Street. Yeah, there's land to the west of that. Yes. True. The township owns. Yes, and that was originally planned for a central recreation district that fell apart too. Uh, Paul, I don't know. I, I I don't know that it fell apart. Um, I, I think there was a presumption that there were going to be uh, that 150 acres to the south of that land that was targeted for recreation uh, was going to, to see 
uh, that huge area develop as recreational. Um, it, it hasn't proven to be that as the Cassages uh, gave their land to the LVHN folks. Right. Um, it, it was probably inevitable that they would want to develop some of that for medical facilities. Uh, but we still have that up there um, waiting for something to happen to it. And I think it was a good purchase because we don't have any uh, other uh, land in, in that area, the, the area that is going to grow into some, some homes in the near future, hopefully. Um, well, maybe not in the near future, but um, that land will be available on on the uh, west side of MacArthur Road. I thought it was a, a, I think it was a good decision when that was bought. I think, uh, I'm not sure who it was. It could have been Ed that uh, was there when that land was bought, but uh, it was a good idea. Going back to that, that we, it's called Clear Channel Park now. Um, Paul, I think when you were on the board, um, there was a, suggestion of probably opening up some of that land just for cut fields. And I think some of the residents came out in opposition to that and that's it kind of died. But um, just thinking aloud too, recreation fee um, or land, there's also the possibility of public improvements in lieu of land and recreation fee. So, you know, a park like that, maybe somebody installing roads and parking lots and clear cutting could be something considered in lieu of a fee itself or a land itself. So, um, but that the, is a, the, the other consideration you have to, and I, I've already heard this mentioned uh, outside of uh, the usual channels, but some developers may be clamoring for their money back very fairly because I believe there's a, a period of like three years that you have to spend that money or whatever it may be. That law has been changed long ago. Oh, it is where the law, the, the, the law was once written where you had to use the money for new recreation amenities. Um, they even changed the law where you can also use it for maintenance. You can replace a roof on a, a park building that's within a district. You know, it's well, so no. it's, it, oh, sure they I recognize know. that municipalities, you know, you give somebody, you know, $10,000, they're and not going to go out and build a, a four acre park with $10,000. So. Is the money from recreation being used for that purpose currently? When the, a, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. No, I, I was just going to say what you probably were, that uh, we haven't spent a whole bunch of money out of that pot for a while. Oh, well, that, There's money. That's, that's what I was referring to. I understand it can be used for maintenance or any public, end, uh, public reason that pertains to, to recreation such as building recreation centers or fixing roofs or putting up uh, jungle gyms. I understand that. But my understanding is it wasn't, it's not being spent within a period of three years and the developer can come back and get it. That's, that was just what I mentioned. But that, yeah, that law has changed. I'll send you the link, Paul. But yeah, I- what, In the, the time frame? Commission... Are, you, are you referring to the time frame for years? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't, I wanted to speak at the last, the one meeting and I, I couldn't get in quick enough and you moved on, but yeah, the law has been changed. It does open it up the use of the money for other, other things, but like I, I said, you can Mr. Warren, I'm not debating that. What I'm saying is the time frame for the money to be spent, not, not for what the purpose it's spent, but the time frame. Time frame has been changed. They can't come past, back. Past three years. Yes. Okay. I, I'll try to find the link again, and if you find you just discern otherwise, um, I'd be interested to in seeing it. But this came from a, I think a state website. Okay, thank you. I'll share it with the board too. I mean, it's good information. I mean, second set of eyes is always helpful. This is Lee. Um, I, I, I agree. You know, Jeff. After you mentioned that, I did go on, and there was. A change to the law, what the monies can be used for is expanded slightly, but it still is within the confines of the law and the time period. Was removed, but they still can request it back if the fees are not spent within the confines of the law. But, yeah, that's 
it was it was changed than what it was. It was three years, and it could only be on capital improvements, but that was changed. So there's no time frame as far as it could be held on for indefinitely. Is that what you're saying? I think we have to look at it. Too a lot of times when these grant proposals come up, the first question is that asked, how are we going to match it? I mean. Recreation escrow fund is a good way to match leverage the dollars that we have to go after the state grants. I agree. Okay, thank you for your time, buddy. And good luck. The next person we have is Mick D. Is Joe not on the meeting anymore? Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Geisinger. Melissa, are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Uh, can we put on our next attendee, please? Next, we have Mick D. Mick, you're now unmuted. Mr. D, welcome. Mr. D. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, we hear you. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, President Marks. I just wanted to. Uh, Take a quick minute to congratulate Commissioner Roman on his election to the board. I wish him the best of luck in his term. Uh, Thank you. Congratulations, uh, President Marks, on uh, becoming president of the board. Thank and you. To our new um, treasurer, uh, Tina Corrin. So just wanted to take a minute, wish you guys the best of luck, and um, I look forward to all the great work you guys are going to do. Thank you for your time, President Marks. Thank you, Mr. D. All right, Melissa, do you want to put our next attendee on? Um, the last attendee has withdrawn their request to speak, so that's all we have. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to close courtesy of the floor. Public hearing and voting on resolutions. Resolution number 3185. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor and Whitehall Township to amend the chapter A. 29-1 fee schedule. Do I have a motion? So Go ahead. Who is first? Commissioner Roman. And then Phil. Any comments by the board? Any comments by the public? There are no comments from the public. President Thanks Marks? Yes. I had a question. In terms of these fee schedules, are they uh, something that is reviewed on an annual basis, a semi-annual basis, a five-year basis? What, what period of time are these fees uh, reviewed? Well, Mr. Roman, that's a pointed question. But my understanding is there is really no set in stone way of amending these fees. So there's not a protocol that we fire, follow. Basically, the bureau chief will bring it to our attention or the administration. So there's no rhyme or reason on how these fees are amended, if I'm correct. Okay, there, there's there's also no tie to inflation or any any other metric. I will either defer to Mr. Myers, the mayor, Mrs. Rackus, whoever would like to speak on this. We here, I'll speak first and then I'll let the higher ups go beyond me. <laughs> I, um, this particular resolution is, is generated partly from my department, partly from the um, change to the law with respect to the small cell antennas. And our requirement under the change in the state law for us to establish fees for those installations. 
The other parts, um, some of them are covered in my department for, for permitting. Some of them are just general fees that the township charges um, that are beyond my department. Each year, we're supposed to look at the fee schedule each of our each of the departments and evaluate whether the fees that are being charged are appropriate and in conformance with what our peer municipalities charge. Um, with our with respect to building permit fees and things like that, those are mandated by law to be passed through fees. So when we negotiate the when we receive proposals for inspection for the inspection contract, which is every three years, that's the time that we review those particular fees. That will happen this year in 2022 because it is a proposal year for inspection services. So those fees may be modified, but they won't be until a later date until we get the proposals in from them. Some of these fees in this particular part of the resolution, they haven't been updated probably for more than 40 years. I mean, and if you look at some of the assessments like the railroad tracks and things like that, I mean, obviously we don't have railroad tracks being put in at any time, you know, currently. Um, we did try and update them based on information that I got from other municipalities. But this is just a portion of the entire fee schedule. There's a lot more fees that the township charges that aren't under my jurisdiction. So just like President Mark said, they come up at, you know, at the point that that particular bureau chief or if administration wants to look at them and change them. Um, so just to try and give a little background based on from my part of it. And, and when we establish new services, um, or update our services like certificate of occupancy inspections and how we did those with the code inspections. Um, you know, over the years, we updated those fees to reflect what we were actually spending on, you know, our employees time going out and doing those inspections. So it is kind of floating based on if the services are created or increased or intensified. But, um, I do try to look at my part of it every year at the beginning of the year. Well, not really at the beginning of the year, at budget time, so that at the beginning of the year, they go into place um, at the beginning of the year. But a lot of my fees now are driven by the inspections contract. Thank you. Are you satisfied with that, Mr. Roman? Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to get some sense of how these were determined and on, on what frequency were they uh, reviewed and that kind of a thing. I know when I was on a school board, a lot of these fees were very arbitrary. Uh, some fees weren't updated for 20 years. Some fees were updated every year and there wasn't real rhyme and reason to come to any type of uh, uh, determination on what fees would be raised when, whether it was tied to inflation. And I was just trying to get an understanding of how these were arrived at. Good enough. I can't agree more. I think we need to be diligent across the board, you know, be it rec, the police department, whatever it may be, fire. I, I, I think every year the administration should reach out to our bureau chiefs and, you know, ask them how they feel about their fee schedules and if they need to be reviewed and it's necessary to change, you know, upgrade, downgrade, whatever it may be. I, I think we need to stay on top of that. Oh, uh, yeah, so, and, and also with a thorough review, maybe some fees could be done away with as well. So. Exactly, exactly. Can't agree more. Okay, with that being said, any more questions on this? Okay, Mr. Secretary, can you please pull the board? Uh, Mr. President, can you ask the public if they have any input, please? I actually did that, but okay. Any comments oh, no, I, from the public, Melissa? There's no comment from the public. All righty. Thank that you. Being said, uh, Mr. Okay, and again, I, I didn't hear that, but my ears are clogged up, so. I'm sorry, I, I thought I did it earlier. I yeah. apologize. Uh, Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Atiyah? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner uh, Warren? Aye. And uh, President uh, Marks? Yes. Motion passes, uh, resolution passes seven I zero nays. Okay, moving on. 
a motion to approve the reappointment of Rick Spence to serve on the Whitehall Township Civil Service Commission term expiring December 31st, 2027. Do I have a motion? I'll move the chair. Do I have a second? I'll second, Phil. So. With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Sorry. Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. President Marks? Yes. Motion passes seven eyes, zero nays. A motion to approve the reappointment of Vito Gallo to serve on the Whitehall Township Industrial Commercial Development Authority, term expiring December 31st, 2026. Do I have a motion? I'll move Fisher. That motion, Warren. Okay, Mr. Fisher was first. Mr. Warren was second. Warren was second, yes. Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Uh, and I'm just interjecting here, President Marks. Uh, you're supposed to see if there's any discussion or anything. Okay, I didn't know. I apologize. I didn't know on motions to reappoint I had to do that. But is there... Any comments by the public? Um, we have a comment, but I'm not sure it's pertaining to this issue from Paul Geisinger. Um, it's pretty long. It says, all this is the written document that I believe that Paul's referring to at the meeting this evening regarding the recommendation from the Recreation Commission and Fees, Lee, and then goes on it's an email from Tony Koga to Lee Rack and a subject recom. Okay, we're going to hold off on that, Melissa, until I get through these motions. And when we're through these motions, we'll discuss that issue. Okay. There are no okay. other comments. Okay. Any comments by the board? President March? Yes. I just had a question on these nominations and uh, previous experience I've had. Sometimes the people nominated were actually present and were given a chance to say a few words. Does that apply here? Uh, yeah, that's what I just opened the floor for to ask if anyone wanted to comment. Okay, so the people that are nominated are, are not in attendance then? They could be. There's no way of knowing unless we look at the attendee list and see if they're there. Okay. All right. Okay, with that being said, any more comments from the board? With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. Commissioner Roman. Yes. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. And President Marks. Yes. And I want to apologize. This this is all new to me. I, no, no, no. And I, again, I just, I just wanted to put that out there. So we just have the same flow for everything. That's all. No big deal. We'll get through it. Uh, so the motion passes seven I zero days. Okay, moving on a motion to approve the reappointment of Jonathan Bolton to serve on the Whitehall Township Planning Commission term expiring December 31st, 2025. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Sloniker. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Phil. Okay, Mr. Sloniker, Mr. Ginder. Any comments by the public? There are no comments from the public. Any comments from the board? With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Atia? Yes. 
Commissioner Roman? Yes. President Marks? Yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, moving on. Motion to approve the reappointment of Bruce Miller to serve on the Whitehall Township Civil Service Commission, term expiring December 31st, 2027. Do I have a motion? So moved. Who was that, please? Roman. Commissioner, Commissioner Roman. Roman. Uh, you, Mr. Roman, I, I don't know your voice yet. That's why I keep asking, that's all. Oh, okay. Do I have a second? I'll second, Fisher. Any comments from the public, Melissa? There are no comments from the public. Any comments from the board? With that said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Mr. Roman? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. President Marks? Yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, moving on. A motion to approve the reappointment of James Roth to serve on the Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority, term expiring December 31st, 2026. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Bill. Mr. Gender. Do I have a second? Tia, yeah, I'll second it. Mr. Tia, second. Any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Any comments from the board? <laughs> With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Commissioner Warren? Yes. Sorry, folks. That's okay. And President uh, Marks? Yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, next. Motion to approve the reappointment of Dean Watchering to serve on the Whitehall Township Zoning Hearing Board, term expiring December 31st, 2026. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Mr. Ginter? I'll second it, Warren. Second, Mr. Warren. Comments by the board. Comments by the public, Melissa. There are no comments from the public. Okay, with that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Atia? Yes. President Ginder? Yes. I'm sorry, President Marks, I, we already had you before. I knew I'd do it once, so. Yes. Okay, motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, moving on. A motion to approve the reappointment of Joseph Wilfinger to serve on the Whitehall Township Environmental Advisory Council slash Shade Tree Commission, term expiring December 31st, 2024. Do I have a motion? I'll move, I'll move Fisher. Mr. I Fisher. I was in there before you, Mr. Fisher. But you'll be second, okay. okay? I'll be second. Okay. Any questions from the board? Just want to say, um, I've worked with, uh, I've really gotten to know Joe a little bit better the last few years, uh, working on NEAC and liaisoning to it. Um, I really have a lot of respect for him and he's worked on this committee for, God, I don't know how many decades at this point. And, I've always kind of seen him as a, uh, I guess you want to say conscious of the township and before COVID he used to be as I don't know. He used to be at all the meetings that I was ever at. So, I mean, I respect him and I really look forward to him continuing to serve the township in his capacity. 
Couldn't have said it better myself. Joe served this township well for a long, long time. Any more comments? Any comments from the public, Melissa? No comments from the public. With that being said, Mr. Tri Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Fisher, aye. Commissioner Warren, aye. Commissioner Dinder, yes. Commissioner Roman, yes. Commissioner Atia, yes. President Marks, yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, a motion to approve the reappointment of Jeff Mankiewicz, I apologize if I didn't get that correct, to serve on the Whitehall Township Tax Appeal Board, term expiring December 31st, 2024. Do I have a motion? I'll move. That was? Bill. Okay, Mr. Gender. Second. Do I have a second? Sloniker. Mr. Sloniker. Any comments by the board? Any comments by the public, Melissa? No comments from the public. Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. President Marks? Yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. <clears throat> a motion to approve the reappointment of Henry Weber to serve on the Whitehall Township Authority. Term expiring December 31st, 2026. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Mr. Ginder, do I have a second? Sloniker. Second, Mr. Sloniker. Any comments from the board? Any comments from the public, Melissa? There are no comments from the public. With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Atia? Yes. President Marks? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, I believe the next item agenda, the next item on the agenda, number 10 has been pulled. Am I correct? Laurel Fire Company, number one, lease agreement? Jeff? Not to my knowledge. So that's still standing? As far as I know. I thought that Larissa sent out an email stating that this was being pulled from the agenda. Um, the, no. Uh, they, they, no. It was just the lease agreement changed some wording on it. it oh, that, that's yeah, what it was. Okay, so it I was a revised agreement that I sent out. Right. Okay, I misunderstood. I thought it was being pulled by the agenda. I apologize. Okay, with that being said, a motion to approve the Laurel Fire Company number one lease agreement. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Mr. Ginder, do I have a second? I'll second it, Warren. Any comments by the board? Yes. Uh, I don't want to say the word why. Let me say the word how are we renewing this? How? Yes. It, it's a it's a lease agreement. With the Laurel Fire Company number one, um, we have made uh, a few changes, which uh, uh, 
we have been paying $8,700 a year. That remains. We had uh, the uh, six-year lease, uh, and that didn't change. Um, we agreed to pay for oil on our part of the building. Uh, we agreed to, uh, in addition to clearing the snow away from the front of the uh, of the building, uh, we are also going to uh, do the parking area for the social hall, and they uh, want a key, which uh, will be held close uh, in case there's any uh, emergency. And uh, that was the only other change that we had, Phil. Are we using this building for anything? We have we have property stored in there at this point. Um, some time ago, there was conversation about uh, this being uh, utilized by another organization, um, but I was contact. Well, I contacted uh, the uh, uh, president of the social group, uh, and we came to an agreement and understanding and uh, everybody seems pretty happy about it right now. My question being, if the social hall, the, I'm gonna call it the Laurel Social Hall, should they get somebody who's seriously interested in renting this side of the building or leasing this side of the building? That, does the Laurel organization have the right to or can they have the right to tell us that, you know, we have we have a good tenant for this week. We really don't need the township to rent here. That's not very good English to say that, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, I would yield to uh, Jack Gross, but uh, I believe that this is the exact agreement that we had before, and it doesn't allow for uh, anyone else to be insinuated into that side of the property. My point being, in plain English, do we really need this rental for the township? We we can use it for definitely to to uh, help the fire department. They they need uh, to get some. Uh, they they need that definitely, Phil. Uh, I don't know if uh, our fire department definitely needs this building. Say again. You're saying that our fire department definitely needs the use of this building. Yes. That's okay. all I need to know. Okay. That's fine then. As long as our fire department absolutely positively needs this building. Y yes, I can confirm that. And unfortunately, uh, Dave is not here, or at least not on right now. That's all I need to know. If our fire company needs it, then so much so more to be as far as I'm concerned. That's that's my only question. Okay. Anyone else? Any more comments from the board? Melissa, any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Mr. Fisher. Aye. And President Marks. Yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. Okay, reports of public officials. Uh, President Marks, can we uh, go back to Mr. Geisinger's question? We could. Um, I started going through the minutes and the minutes that are dispersed to all the board members, October 25th under development for Tony comma Lee comma Whitehall Township Director of Development wanted to make sure the rec commission states this decision to take either fee or land on small parcel development. Bob Abbott made the motion and Joe Wolfinger second the motion that the rec commission would take fees in lieu of land defined as small parcel development motion passed unanimously. So, how I don't know how you interpret that. Is that onesie twosie lots that are not interested in a hundred by hundred foot lot? I don't know. Um, but 
I don't recall that, but that's in the minutes on October 25th, 2021. Why don't at your next committee meeting you address that with them and see exactly what they meant? All right. Um, does Lee have a definition of small parcel development? Because they put that in quotes. I don't know, Mrs. Rackus. Do you have anything like that? Is there anything in writing on that? I didn't get that recommendation. Nothing like that. I forwarded to the board tonight the email that I got. It doesn't okay. say that. Mr. Warren, why don't you investigate that in committee and see what you can come back on and see what their, their intentions were. Right. Yeah, they put it in quotes. It, it came to them as small parcel development. I don't know who put that terminology in there. Um, but I know it was discussed the onesies and twosies. It's like, yeah, we would never take land or even be offered land if somebody's dividing one lot and making two. So, um, but I, I would ask that. When these opportunities come up that the president of the rec commission get an email or at least be aware because. Um, yeah, at least we know that the that somebody else on the commission is somebody that's directly on the commission is getting the information. Well, hopefully the administration can reach out to the proper authorities and get that information, you know, yeah. moving forward. Yeah, we think the rec commission sends everything down. I don't know. Um, right. But at least that's a second set of eyes looking at stuff that comes through and it's something's not missed. No, no, I agree. I think it's a great idea. Uh, see what you can find out from from Joe and your committee and then uh, hopefully the mayor and Tony can reach out and be more transparent with this information. Okay, sounds okay. good to me. All righty, report to public officials. Mr. Fisher, if you would like to go first. I wouldn't, uh, President Mark. Actually, just a few quick things. Uh, so, first off, I guess I direct this question to uh, Jack Myers. I'm just wondering where do we stand on uh, getting email addresses for uh, the commissioners? It's still a work in progress. Okay. Do we have an approximate timeline or? Well, it'll cert most certainly be before you go live with your meeting. Um, but, you know, we still have issues to deal with uh, with IT over in the police department yet and a few other things before we can concentrate our efforts to the public meeting room and, and the commissioner's things. Okay. Yeah, just keep us posted. I uh, I am definitely concerned about some of the cybersecurity issues right now. So, I mean, as soon as we can get those, I would be very interested. Absolutely. Thank you. So the second thing, um, I just want to thank um, a few people. I want to thank the uh, Environmental Advisory Council and uh, the mayor. Uh, right now, uh, the mayor and the council are trying to put together some Eagle Scout projects um, in the Whitehall Parkway. Um, they were out over the weekend scouting out some potential sites. Um, we have two scouts who have stepped forward who would uh, really like to work on their Eagles. So. Some projects are being put forward now, and I just got to say, um, just seeing these young these young people just coming, stepping forward, and just you know really wanting to uh, participate. And these these are scouts from Whitehall who you know really want to see the improvement of Whitehall. And I'm in touch with uh, one of the scout masters from Troop 2032 in Whitehall, and uh, they say they have more scouts coming down the pike who are looking forward to projects. So, um, you know, it's just it, it is really good to see you know. The youth and the next generation really stepping up and really trying to beautify and do some great things for for our township. And I mean, I think one of the themes that we've seen throughout the meeting tonight was just you know wanting to improve Whitehall and wanting to see people step up. And um, I think we're getting there. So I just want to thank everyone involved with that, and I look forward to uh, seeing these projects completed. And I will definitely report back to the board um, as these projects proceed. So that's all I have, and uh, I'll hand it back to uh, President Marks. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Commissioner Atia. Thank you, President Marks. I just want to take a moment to first congratulate all of our commissioners um, who are in new positions or or have been reelected. Um, specifically, Commissioner Roman. Look forward to working with you, um, and Thank as you. well as our new treasurer, as well as our new treasurer as well. Um, I, I'd like to also just thank our public works department. I know we just had our first real snowfall for the winter and, uh, you know, I know. Hopefully, we don't get too much, but I just want to thank all those in public works 
for the work they just did, as well as the work they'll continue to do throughout the winter time. Um, that's that's really all I have. Other than that, I, I do want to just mention that I, I will be meeting, I believe, along with um, Commissioner Ginder, with the school district and the mayor. Um, if anybody has any concerns or questions about anything they'd like us to bring to that meeting with the school district to just reach out and, and let us know. Other than that, that's all that I have. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Batia. Uh, Vice President Ginder. Yeah, I only have one thing. <laughs> uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Jack, can I ask who put together the grand activity report? Uh, that we just recently received. Oh, that was Debbie Bowman. Well, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, would you please see that gets to her? I, I think it's a, a nice job done. I think it's where we wanted to head, and uh, she managed to do it, and I think she's managed to do it very well. I have no problem understanding any of it. And uh, again, a, a big thanks to her for doing that. That's, that's all I have. All right, thank you, Vice President Ginder. Secretary Sloniger. Nothing at this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Roman, welcome aboard. Thank you, uh, President Marks. I do have a, a, a few quick co comments uh, relative to uh, Mr. Ken Snyder's um, concern about us meeting in person. I was wondering if we could, as a board, set a deadline, whereas if we don't have the accommodations by a certain date that we will have an alternative location ready and ready to go for us to meet, whether that be that, that deadline be March 1st or March 15th. I think we should make a deadline on that. I couldn't agree more, Mr. Roman. And what I can do is I can reach out to the Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority, which adjoins our existing municipal, municipal building, shares the same parking lot. I know the accommodations aren't as large as they are across the street, and we can't turn anyone away, but I feel confident that if we can get a recording device and we can use the sewer authority's recording device, we can use their venue during that transition period if it comes to that. So I, I, I can reach out to the board at the sewer authority and get their agreement to hold public meetings there if it's the will of the board. And the administration yeah. agrees. Yeah, I, I think I think that would be great. And like I said, if we can make known to the public as of a date certain where we're going to meet in person, whether it's in our commissioner uh, room or an alternative location that people would know up front what to expect rather than just telling people one of these days we're going to get together in person, but have a more definitive uh, pronouncement. And I, I'd like to throw the nuance in that if people are uncom uncomfortable with the situation, be it staff, if they have underlying medical conditions or whatever it may be, I'm conscious of the fact that some people are, you know, they want to protect themselves from this virus. If there are situations like that with our staff, with our, our professionals, even with our board members. I'm sure that in one way, some way or another, we can make accommodations to where they could do it remotely. Of course, we're going to hold these meetings as safely as we possibly can. We'll social distance as much as we can. Of course, masks will be required, you know, if COVID is still in its current state of affairs. We will. We will defer to the medical experts, the CDC, the state of Pennsylvania, whoever it may be, whatever governing bodies are, you know, acknowledging that information or giving that information out. But if there's anyone uncomfortable with the situation, I completely understand that. I'm respectful of their wishes and we will try to accommodate them in any way necessary. But I can't agree with you more. I think, you know, we have to pull this bandaid off at, at some, some time and we need to get back and we need to engage. Our citizens need to be able to engage in a public forum. Joe, Thank I'd be you. glad to sit down with you um, since you're, uh, uh, you are you want to go over to the SOAR authority uh, and uh, you're indicating that you would like to have uh, compliance with uh, administration. I'd be glad to talk to you about that, along yeah. with Jack and anybody else. That's just a suggestion, Mr. Mayor. I mean, if there's alternative sites, I mean, I'm open minded. You know, I just feel it's necessary at some point. And because, like Mr. Schneider had stated and Mr. Roman had stated, 
if we do run into supply chain issues and this drags out into you know late spring, early summer, I mean, I don't know where COVID's going to be. I don't think anyone does, but I think we need to have a plan so that way we can act on it if necessary. With with a deadline. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have to have a firm. You know, we're going to meet X date, but I I think we should start working on it. And, and and you know cementing some some ways to to get this done moving forward. If if I may interject, uh, uh, President Marks, I mean I think we had discussed about trying to get in person uh, sooner, especially over the summer when COVID was kind of at a lull. Right. But I think we were running into some other issues in terms of finding meeting space in the township. Is that resolved? Can that be resolved? And if not. I mean, at least we should at least maintain the ability to get virtual if like, you know, for practical considerations beyond COVID, we can't get another meeting room. No, no, I totally agree. We're, we're not going to walk away from this for sure, because we don't know where this is going. And, and you know, in the event of a natural disaster or what it may be, you know, say our building was destroyed in a, in a terrible storm or whatever, you know, whatever situation. I think we can never give up this ability, but yet in the same token, I agree with Mr. Roman, where moving forward, we have to have some type of plan of action in place. You know, not knowing where this virus is headed or whatever, but at least, you know, if it comes to this a point where we can't, you know, comfortably pull this off, well, so be it. But at least we have an action plan in place so we, we can act on it if we need to, if necessary. And most importantly, notifying the public as to what to expect. I mean, managing expectations here, I think, are important. Absolutely. I, I will sit down with the mayor and the administration, and and we'll. I'll, I'll let the board know, and we'll certainly reach out to the general public as soon as we have any information moving forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Mr. Roman? I, I was going to bring up the other issue that Mr. Snyder brought up regarding. Um, I mean, if we're, we're looking at our tax base in Whitehall shrinking due to various factors, whether it's the retail sector of our township uh, dwindling or what have you, um, I know in previous work that I've done, I was part of a committee that initiated strategic plans or feasibility studies. I'd be happy to be part of something that would have some type of uh, planning in terms of uh, how do we build our tax base so that we're not caught in a situation where we no longer have the tax base to support the services that the citizens expect. Uh, Andy, we'd be glad to put you to work. Okay, I'll take it. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else, Mr. Roman? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Warren. I'd like to follow on what Randy said and congratulate Ms. Commissioner Roman, Commissioner Marks, Commissioner Sloniker, and Treasurer uh, Corin on their election re-election and uh, the appointments to the board. Um, uh, and also, I'd like to do, Phil beat me to the punch, but I, I would like to thank Debbie Bowman for creating this spreadsheet. It's very, very clear, concise, and I appreciate her updating some of the grants that, that I requested. Um, the only comment I have is um, for the Whitehall Parkway Pavilion that that endeavor was started in 2018 with applying for grants. We have like four grants under our belt. We have a total of three hundred and six thousand three hundred twenty nine dollars in grant dollars allocated to Whitehall. And I was hoping we can get that project off the ground sooner rather than later and actually try to get construction this spring. Um, the sooner we demonstrate that we can fulfill on the grants that we do have, the more likely they'll support awarding future grants to us. I, I don't wanna see this go by another year if possible. And I think, I think we have enough money now to pull it off. That's all I have. All righty. And my report, uh, first of all, I'd like to let the board know that the committee assignments were set out by Mrs. Bruder today. So you should have gotten them and everything should be set. If anyone has any questions, please feel free, feel, please feel free to reach out to me. Also, I'd like to mayor with Jeff and uh, what Phil said earlier. Welcome aboard, Mr. Roman. Welcome aboard, Mrs. Corin. Congratulations, Mr. Soniger. Uh, 
I think that Bowman did an outstanding yeoman's job on that report. Uh, I want to thank Jack Myers also for his input. And I'd like to report that I spoke to attorney Fogarty today and Mr. Warren, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at this information. But the Debakowitz signatures have all been collected. And I was told that by noon today, the deed was going to be in the recorder of deeds office and it was going to be transferred to Whitehall Township. So I don't know if our attorney is aware of that or Mr. Clark yet, but Mr. Fogarty said, start digging whenever you want because it should be yours at noon today. So I just wanted to inform the board and hopefully moving forward, we can finally get this done after what, three or four years of frustration. Uh, Fantastic, thank you. Joe, thank you. More, like, more like 10 or 12. Well, it all depends on how you look at it, Mike. All I was worried about was getting those kids off Mechanicsville Road and having them a safe place to transit between the high school, you know, and the and the McDonald's and the Wawa. Right. But yeah, there's more to this than meets the eye, but at least we have all the signatures now. And like I told you, Mr. Fogarty assured me that everything would be recorded today and that we would be the official owners of the property. And there's no excuses moving forward. I understand weather, but other than that, we've had more than enough time to plan. And I think we need to get on this as soon as possible. Uh, last but not least, I just want to thank President Ginder and I want to thank Secretary, Secretary Sloniger for their past and present service. I want to thank them for being mentors and helping me through this process. I promise everyone I'll get better over time. And that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Well, I want to begin. Joe with. Uh, the, the good news that uh, we were reported, we reported. Uh, I think at the last meeting. Uh, at the December meeting, uh, getting the additional 500,000 dollars through the redevelopment assistant capital program. Gives us uh, $1,500,000 to defray the costs. Um, um, I think that uh, this process has moved along well and we're nearing the end of it. Um, I think this is, uh, or at least I hope this is what the board wanted, uh, was the, the primary goal for I think unanimously all of the board members when I came into office and I think this is going to be a, a happy place for us to live for the next 40, 50 years. But this million and a half is going to make a big difference for us. A um, uh, couple other things. Uh, we talked about LVHN and uh, that's been taking up uh, a lot of staff time, a lot of work. And uh, things are are moving along. We'll we'll see where it goes. As you know, it's uh, it's going to be more uh, an art than anything else. Trying to come to resolution here, and we'll continue to work through that process. Um, we also um, uh, got a new grant to uh, work on the uh, IRT trailhead head, uh, where we're hoping to double the parking space up there. And uh, that's moving forward. Uh, met with the L and L committee, and I thought that was a, a really good meeting. Uh, I think we're we're uh, moving forward. I don't know if we're we're going to get through this or not, um, but we're we're working hard. Uh, L and L has been looking at this for some time now. Um, we uh, reviewed applicants for the uh, Bureau of uh, Bureau Chief of Public Works, and uh, we continued to, to uh, accept uh, to uh, to accept applications and set interviews. Still working on that. Um, met with uh, the communities that care. Uh, it's a group that is affiliated with the Penn State Extension and its primary interest is to develop uh, a plan to support all of the uh, school kids that we have out there 
they're making inroads uh, to developing processes that uh, have proven to be uh, effective in helping people who are having troubling uh, problems in their lives and developing uh, a more effective uh, student uh, uh, interaction. Um, met with uh, local and, and regional representatives with Lafarge, Holcomb. Um, one thing that was interesting there is that they are the only plant in the country right now that are developing cement products that will sequester about 30% more carbon dioxide than other cement processes that are being used traditionally. Uh, they're working hard at that and uh, it'll be uh, a bit yet, but they're moving toward marketing that project, that, uh, um, or that uh, construction process. Um, I met with uh, Lehigh Valley Elite Network um, to talk about some regional matters uh, and more appropriately also uh, to talk about what we're doing in Whitehall. Um, that was a, a very interesting group. Um, we got the first uh, the uh, first materials for the pavilion. Um, actually, today the last of that came, as I understand it. So we have all the all the things we need to get going on that pavilion. And uh, Tony tells me that we have uh, buy-in from the Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority and NBMA to help us with that. Um, oh, we. <laughs> We had the, the first uh, Whitehall house decorating contest. Uh, Aziz Atia, who was the owner of Vintage Barbershop, um, came out and said, hey, I want to give $500 to the person who puts the best, uh, the best uh, decorations out in front of their house for Christmas. And uh, we had a, a good response. That was a, a family from... Fullerton that won the uh, the contest that was uh, James and Kathy Hine. Uh, they were excited. It was it was fun doing the judging for that. Um, also, 329 is pretty hot right now because we're getting close to when we will be seeing bids going out for uh, for the bridge that'll be south of the the existing bridge uh, as this thing progresses like two years from now you'll see that completed most likely um, but that uh, will never uh, create a problem until the last week or so um, that that during that period the uh, the northern bridge the existing one is going to carry all of that traffic and it'll be a few days. Uh, that will make the transition. So still working on detours uh, for the beginning through the end of that process. Um, we're splitting costs for the lighting with right now. It's just with Northampton Borough and us along with Lehigh County. I'm not sure if Northampton County is going to jump in or not, but uh, that's still being worked on. Uh, it's going to move some of the <clears throat> the lighting along 329 uh, between the bridge and the the uh, Lafarge buildings, uh, and at one of the uh, the locations that we'll be putting an additional uh, an additional light on are the uh, locations where we're going to see people going across. The, uh, the 329 property from south to north or vice versa. And uh, we're, uh, we're working hard with the county on that project. So um, that's uh, a, a smidgen of what we've been involved with, but I think the more important things. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them for you. Any questions for the mayor? None. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I haven't had dinner yet. Okay. 
Uh, Treasurer's report, Madam Treasurer. Hi. Um, uh, first of all, I want to thank the commissioners for your support. And um, it was an eye opener to me. January 4th was the first day of the new Whitehall Township Tax Office which I believe is going to make this township very proud. I have excellent staff. They know their jobs. Um, they're teaching me a lot. My job is to make sure that the taxpayers are well represented in this township. Every month you will get a report from me on time. Anytime you have any questions or want to visit the beautiful tax office, you're welcome to come in. The ladies are fantastic and I'm here to help the taxpayers in this township. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Anyone else? This is uh, Commissioner Ward. Um, uh, I know that the Treasurer provided disbursement accounts, but it sounds like forever and ever, we were also getting summary of 18 other accounts. So um, I'm not I'm not sure myself, but what what constitutes the complete Treasurer report? Is it the for disbursement accounts, or is it the 18 other accounts that we were provided in the past? In the past, I mean, we were getting thick packets like this. That's a whole year's worth of reports. So, um, everything from liquid fuels tax fund. Um, so, I, I don't know. I guess that's a question. I don't know if we have an answer for it now, but um, very well, well organized. I'm just questioning. Recreation escrow, developers escrow, general fund, state highway fund. Those are all township funds, Jeff. Right. But that's how the, for the last six years or more, that's what a treasurer report contains. So, um, correct. Do we, because those are all funds that are the, the oversight and the management actively by Whitehall Township, not the tax office in itself. So we're just switching to the disbursement accounts managed by the treasurer. Right, and that okay. you've added that to the uh, disclosures that are made on a periodic basis, so. Yeah, if I'm not, if I'm not correct, that was the recommendation that was made by Bucknell Lusicki. That those additional accounts should be reported, yes. correct? Yes. So yeah. it should be all existing accounts that the past treasurer was reporting to us. For eight, eight, 18 accounts, I, ca I caught, I tallied up. In addition to the treasurer's disbursement, plus all the township accounts. And I don't know if that should be coming from the township side or if that is the treasurer's duty, but. Um, what I understood is um, for years and years and years, it was always those 18 accounts that were provided. I don't know so if long we're all on it. I don't have the answer. I, as long as we uh, all come to an agreement of what, what's expected and there's no ambiguity. So, well, we'll just be needs happy. to be clarified. Uh, Mr. Gross, are you on? Yes, sorry, I just had to unmute. That's okay. What do you recommend here moving forward on exactly what is required of the treasurer to report to the board? Well, I, what I'm going to ask is if I can speak to Deputy Mayor Myers. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure from this conversation exactly which reports have been made. I understand that there are reports from the treasurer and reports from, from the township fiscal office. Uh, and I, I think the best thing, if, uh, if you would allow it is for me to speak to, um, to the deputy mayor, uh, you know, not, I don't, I don't know that it'll be effective to do it in the meeting here, speak to him separately Understood. and then, and then get, uh, we, we can get back to you on this issue. Yeah, if you can investigate that, Mr. Gross, and 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 reach out to Jack Myers, and then Jeff, is that okay? And then oh yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. What we'll do is I I recommend that we get a list that we aren't required to have a monthly financial report from the township itself. So just whatever the requirements for the treasurer are to give to the board, that's all the information that we really need. 
And bear in mind that the forensic accountants recommended that we see three additional deposit accounts that, that they're taking into consideration from what we were normally getting. Yeah, and that's what I was referring to earlier. In their report. Right, right. So, Mr. Gross, if you could research that and find out exactly what you feel the board needs to have given to them, you know, reported by the treasurer, that would be much appreciated. Understood. I'll, I'll, I'll do that before next, uh, before your next meeting. Okay. President great. Marks. Yes. I had a question in terms of this Bucknell Lasicki report. Can I get a copy of that report? And is there a highlighted or an outline of their recommendations that I could see as well? Well, I'm going to defer to our attorney to answer that question. The reason why is I'll let him explain things. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Roman, I, I am certainly uh, willing to discuss that report with you. Uh, the, the report is privileged and not a public record, so I prefer not to do it at the public meeting. If, if you want to call me tomorrow, I'd be happy to discuss it with you further. Sure. But the end result, there, there were some best practice recommendations made. Is, is that correct understanding of it? Part, part of the report were recommendations from the auditors. Exactly. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. I, I, I think, you, Mr. Roman, if you don't have my phone number, let me know, or please email me or someone in the township can get it to you. I'd, I'd be happy yeah, to speak yeah, to you. Yeah, I got it from uh, President Marks the other day. Oh, okay. Okay, with that being said, anyone else? Any other comments? I think it's just important to note that these reports are snapshots in time. And it's the process of cash reconciliation is important because if it's not recorded, it doesn't show up in a report. No, understood. I mean, there's no way that you can have by the minute reporting. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't happen instantaneously. You know, some of it's, you know, old news, but you still right. have to, you know, the, the reports still have to be provided so we can right. disseminate somehow, you know, what type of finances, you know, where the township's at. Okay, with that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Mr. Warren, do I have a second? I'll second, Fisher. Mr. Fisher, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Be safe. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone.